All right, so today we're going to take a look at using EDA Playground to uh, create a model of a circuit, um, a circuit component, and to test it using iVeriLog. Okay, so in electrical engineering and computer and software engineering, you'll often see uh, logical circuits created with things like um, uh, AND gates and OR gates and uh, adders and things like that. So you'll you'll see things like, uh, in this case, this is a half adder, and it has a truth table which relates the inputs to the outputs. Now we're going to do something like this in um, EDA Playground in iVerilog. So on this page right here, this is one of the, the uh, read the docs pages on, on creating uh, FPGAs. There's um, there's some code in here about uh, creating a half adder. And so what we want to do is we want to take this and I've modified it slightly. You'll see that in the in the example here. This is the circuit represented in Verilog, a, um, a programming language for doing high level uh, hardware description. And so it describes the module itself, the inputs for it, which are wires A and B, and the outputs for it, which are the sum and carry wires. And then there's equations to describe how the output relates to the input. So the sum wire will take the values of A and B, okay, and they'll do an exclusive OR between the two. And then for carry, the carry output is related to A and B through the logical AND um, operation. All right, so this is basically a definition of what a half adder does in terms of its components and in terms of its actions. So we're going to take this and we're going to place it inside of an EDA Playground model. So I've registered with the EDA Playground. I'm now going to uh, log in. I'm going to try and log in. There we go. All right. So in EDA Playground, you propose both your test bench, which is uh, the thing that runs your module, and then you also create your module. All right, so I'm going to put my module in right here. And it's slightly different than the one that was on the read the docs page because I've added a time scale. All right, and then I'm going to put in my test system or test script like this. And what's important to begin with is that this is the same as before. I've added in this to make it work, which is the time scale because there's uh, signals that go through at a particular rate. And here I'm testing for all of the different combinations of inputs what should be the uh, outputs of this half adder. And that's basically the truth table. So what we see here is that for an input of a wire is equal to zero and B wire is equal to zero. So A is zero and B is zero. Then the sum right here should be zero and the carry right here should be zero. In here, I say A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, I wait. And then I say, if the sum is not zero or the carry is not zero, then say I failed. Otherwise, I passed and put a message out there. Same for an input of zero and one. The output should be sum of one or uh, a and sorry, a carry of zero, etc. Okay, that's that's what's going on in here. The rest of this is support for how to create the half adder and, and linking in the test bench right here to the module for the half adder over here. We have our signals and the timing for the signals. Uh, the fact that our, our uh, clock signal has a positive edge things along those lines. Okay, and then we have the end of the testing and the end of the module right here. So this is all in here. I'm going to choose over here uh, how I'm going to run my simulation. I want to use Icarus Verilog 0.9.7, which is iVerilog. There's other um, test frameworks that you can use, but that's what we're going to use in here. I don't think I have to change anything else. The compile options are set, the run options don't really need anything that does it automatically and down here we're going to give it a name we're going to say this is the half adder uh, example from uh, read the 
docs. I'm just putting my source in there. And uh, I'm just going to put a link to the original code because we always want to cite our original sources like that. And I'm going to save it. Hopefully it saves. Oh, there it is. It's saved. And I'm going to run it. And the four outputs should come out here. Um, for some reason, it doesn't stop properly, so I'm going to hit the stop button right there. Okay, so the first test, it passed. Uh, let's see, where was that? It was this one right here. So that passed. So for an input of A and B of 0 and 0, the output was 0 and 0. For an input of 0 and 1, the output was 1 and 0. So we take a look at the truth table over here, and we can see the truth table is, is working out. And let's see, for an input combination of A and B of 1 and 0, the output for sum and carry is 1 and 0. Is that the case? Yeah, that's what the truth table tells us right there. And then for an input combination of 1 and 1, A is 1, B is 1, we want a sum of 0 and a carry of uh, 1 right there. Yeah, that's it right there. And so we have a, a test um, bench that verifies that the module that was written uh, worked as it should. Now, let's imagine for a moment that I made a mistake in here. So we're going to say, um, let me see, I think we can do, um, let's do an or instead of an and. Okay, so right here I'm just going to say should be A and B. So I've just, I've inserted a typo on purpose. All right, so I'm going to save it, and let's see what happens for the output. Run. Okay, I'm going to hit the stop button, and you can see that my test bench has failed. It failed there. It failed there. I have two failures. I know that this is the case, that I failed it. Well, I've inserted a typo by accident. Well, on purpose in this case, but normally this would be by accident. And so... The test bench allows us to identify the potential for an error in here. And the reason we do this is because we want to make sure that the development team and the testing team are working together uh, to verify uh, that the, the, the proposed design that we're going to be putting into an FPGA or some other circuit works as intended. So creating your functionality and testing it using an explicit test bench is actually a very standard thing to do in engineering, whether it's in the sort of the physical engineering fields like civil and mechanical, or if it's electrical, software, um, etc. We we want to be able to have both an original design and a test bench to make sure that our designs are correct. And that is what is going on right here. A design and a test bench. Mm -hmm.